Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to bet you never thought watercolor could teach you how to draw, but I am going to prove you wrong. I love using watercolor together with pen and ink. There's just something about the two of them that works well together. And this is the inspiration photo for the piece that I'll be making today in this demonstration. And it's a demonstration because it's going to lead to this class that just launched. I want to show you how easy the content of the class is going to be by doing this piece, which is about the same equivalent difficulty level. The class is going to be a level three. So you're expected to kind of have some idea what you're doing with watercolor, maybe uh, have a small confidence with doing a little bit of drawing and doodling, but you don't have to have vast amounts of experience to do this. And I'll show you why. So I'm taking some yellow pigment and spilling it out for those flowers on the top of the circle so that they burst out and dropping some new gamboge into the Hansa yellow light. So I get multiple colors going on in there some green at the bottom to make some very splashy lines for all those leaves. And then I'm just going to drop in some darker colors as I go. So I'm going to add in some anthraquinoid scarlet into the centers of the flowers. And notice that these are not looking like I sat there and painted every flower blossom in that vase. I was looking for the feeling of the explosion of color and the explosion of those blossoms just kind of bursting toward the sky and then throwing in some dark colors at the bottom. The circle helps me to just cut off the vase because I don't want to worry about the vase. I just want to paint those flowers and get that feeling incorporated into this, this piece. Got it nice and dry so I can work on the pen and ink portion. And during the wash and ink class, I'll show you the watercolor portion in real time. Most of that is going to be painting an area with water and then dropping color into it. You can use traditional watercolors. You can use your crafty ink reinkers. You can use liquid watercolors, brush -o. You can use any kind of water medium that's going to be able to flow out into a puddle of water. And I'll show you real carefully how to do those because that's what's going to guide the pen and ink work. So once all the, the watercolor is done, you jump in with your pen, and I'm using a fountain pen, but you can use a Sharpie, you can use a Pilot pen. I've got some cheap options listed in the pre-class lesson with all the supplies in it. And just follow the shapes in the watercolor. See, I'm tracing around those. I, I've blobbed on shapes that kind of felt blossomish. They weren't like really specific blossoms. And then I'm letting my pen draw whatever I feel like drawing in there. The watercolor is giving me the guidance for the feeling for where the lines should go, how they should burst out, because that was where I got loose. And now I get to get tight with all that detail. If I want to add shading, I can do that. And in the class, I'll be talking about adding the shading and different techniques for making jagged lines, making parallel lines, lots of different line work types of ideas for you. You don't have to be somebody who draws all the time and is really great at that to be able to take this class and get a whole ton out of it. It's very relaxing because once you get that watercolor done, you're just going to sit and trace. And that is, I find it very therapeutic myself. I don't know if other people do. Maybe I'm weird that way, but it is ridiculously therapeutic. And the class is also only a mini class. And on Friday, when you see Friday's video, I'll explain why, because there's some special stuff going to go on this summer, and I'm excited to be able to tell you all about that, but it's not all ready right now, so I have a bunch of work I have to do in the meantime to get ready for Friday for that big launch of lots of fun for the whole summer to come. But here I'm finishing it off, I get to that circle, and I didn't get anything out to be able to trace a perfect circle. I just made a second circle around it so that it feels very loose and wonky like the rest of the drawing. And then at the very end, I just go into the drawing and I look for places where I maybe missed a line, you know, missed a, a place where I could put a flower petal. I could add some shading to certain areas 
and we'll talk about that in the, the class as well so that you'll have all that you need to be successful in creating some great images all by yourself with a blank piece of paper because I want to make sure that you have skills to do the kinds of things you want to do. And I know a lot of people admire people who can do pen and ink work and you can be one of those people that gets admired for that. So here's a preview of the lessons in the class. We're going to do a cluster of flowers. You could do this with lilacs. You can do it with um, any, anything that clusters, hydrangeas, that sort of thing. You'll just alter the shape of the flowers themselves, but I'll show you how to watercolor this so that you have shapes to work with. When we get to this guy, this is two jellyfish, and I'll be talking about how to make the lines intertwine. So you can learn how things go in front of and behind each other. So if you're drawing a garden and you have leaves that go in front and behind, you'll have that skill in your tool belt. We'll also do trees. So if you're going on a camping trip and you want to be able to draw the scenery around you, this is one way to do that. You can take a sketchbook with you and have some, some tools so you can do some painting and then add some line work to it. Also, of course, had to include mountains since we included trees so that you can make a mountain scene if you're going to go out and go camping. And this is another one of those really fun lessons. And we've finally going to get to one of my favorites, which is this betta fish. And I'll show you how to make all of these beautiful swirls, which you could do a, a ball gown with it. You can do curtains blowing in the wind. Lots of different types of ways you can use these lines, but I'll show you how to make them look like they undulate. So there's a link to the class in the doobly-doo. Link to my blog in the doobly-doo if you want to go pin this thing so you can go try it because I'd love to see you give it a shot and then decide if you're ready for the class or not. And I will see you on Friday when we're going to take a look at this crazy piece because, yeah, I, I did another epic thing. And it's going to be fun. And as soon as it's all done, I'll be able to tell you about it. All right, smash that like button and share it with your friends. I'll see you Friday.